Today, I will be attempting to survive 100 days in hardcore mod in Minecraft as the oh, Avatar. Oh my god! And my only objective is to invade the Fire Nation and take down the Fire Lord. But before I do that, I need to master all eight elements, fight a bunch of insanely overpowered modded bosses, and even tame a flying bison. It's gonna get real tough. You get it? Because her name is tough, like the word. Please don't click off the video, I need views. Shut your s Also, 42,000 likes and I will do another 100 days video on something even more epic and insane. And don't forget to subscribe to- So day zero, I started off in a desert biome and I immediately started chopping down some wood so I can start making all the basic tools, you know, like the crafting table, pickaxe, axe, and so on. But then in the distance, I saw these guys, they were doing like the Fortnite dance and you know, they were having a good time. So I went to go say hi and then this happened. Yeah! Oh, they're evil! Whoa! They're making noises! I ran away as far as I could and watched from a distance. And look at them, you doing take the L on me. So I ran away and there was a ravine. There was a ravine right next to me. I got some cobblestone. I got some cobblestone pickaxe, cobblestone axe, got some iron. And then things got even more insane when I looked in the air. I saw two apapadis. Oh, look at them! And the coolest thing is that I can actually tame these bisons and ride them around. Which, of course, I will attempt to do later on in the video. But anyways, I went back to mining. I got some coal, got some iron iron smell to that shit got some more iron got some more more coal but nighttime was coming and i was hearing very concerning sounds in the distance so i dug myself into this hole and this was gonna be my house for the first day and of course i smelted all that iron and i even made myself some tandoori <laughs> Day one was here and it was a new day, so I decided to go outside to get some fresh air, you know, go for a little walk. But I turned around for one second and what the hell is that? What? Yeah, those guys were back and they were asking for my social security this time. So I went back to my little man cave, made my iron tools, made a full set of iron armor and even a share because I was sick and tired of sleeping on the floor. By just day one, I was already maxed out, dripped, and ready to master my first bending. But I had one big problem. I didn't have a teacher. Shut your s And so when day two was here, I told myself that I'll be going on a voyage to find some scrolls. But you gotta realize that I have a problem where I get distracted very easily. And so when I found out that there was an ostrich horse thing in this mod and that I could actually ride it, stuff went downhill. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! Literally, but falling down here opened my eyes to this cave where I found a new type of purple ore called amethyst or amethyst I, I, I don't know how to pronounce this thing, but I did get an achievement called treasure of the earth So I decided to collect some more I also started building this thing like an L shape to mark my territory where I will be digging down But then I realized that I was actually getting pretty hungry So I went back up top to get some more kebab day three to four I had only one goal in mind and that was to dig deeper to find some diamonds So I kept on digging and digging and digging until I realized that I was actually getting Getting close to something and I was right although I didn't find diamonds I was able to find a bunch of gold and I also came across more of these purple ores which I then found out are actually stronger than iron and so of course I had to mine some more and crafted myself some amethyst armor and weapons which by the way you can tell this looks so much more cooler than iron after a bit more mining it was time for me to go back home so I started building my way back up top but I forgot that I have short-term memory and by this, I mean I literally forgot which direction I came from, which is sad. So here I was, walking around like a dumbass, and I couldn't find any food. Like, I was getting really, really hungry. But I kept on walking and walking, and eventually it became nighttime. Monsters were approaching me from left, right, and center. I was even getting attacked by a stupid invisible zombie because... I installed this dumb mod in this mod pack that makes simple mobs super overpowered for no reason. Like, look at this. This zombie was literally invisible and drowning me. And then in the distance, I saw this structure and next to it what seemed like a village. So I started walking as fast as I can and mobs were still approaching me, so I had to be careful. Oh! I somehow made it across the dangers alive, but what I saw on the other side completely shot me. What the... Fuck. I quickly got some food since I was still low on energy. And then I tried to speak to some of the villagers about the attack, but they were completely scared like someone's gonna come and kill them. And then I started freaking out because the fire was starting to spread really, really fast, and I didn't know what else to do besides hit the fire to put them out. But I quickly realized that I was too late. I was helpless. I was weak. I was a failure. And that day, when the village needed me the most, I vanished. Ah! 
I ran away as far as I could, hoping to find some shelter or even a therapist. But I was losing energy fast and also motivation to go on. But eventually, after it felt like days had passed by, I spotted another village in the distance. It felt like I didn't eat for a month, so I got a bunch of kebabs and I even introduced myself to Uncle Paji, who welcomed me to stay in his village. These were some of the friendliest people I have ever met. And this one guy even packed his bags and ran out of his house so I can stay in his place instead. Everything was working out. I had found a family that accepted me and I even got a place to stay. But then I saw something that sparked some bad memories. Bruh. I immediately whipped out my water bucket and took a dive, trying to sneak up behind the house so I can catch them off guard. But it turns out that these firebenders were sellouts and they were offering me their firebending scrolls in return for diamonds, gold, and so on. I didn't have that type of money so I went inside to check the blacksmith chest and sure enough I found my first universal scroll. Now this would be a good time to explain how you you actually level up and unlock new bending abilities in this mod pack. Basically, there's different scrolls for different bending types such as an air scroll for air bending, fire scroll for fire bending, and so on. But since I had just gotten a universal scroll, I was able to unlock any ability from any bending type. But of course, I couldn't cheat the system, I had to go with the air gust for my first ability since I am an airbender by heart. And this is what it looks like, it's basically farting out a wind from your hands. Eventually, it was turning into nighttime, and I was in a cave, which you can tell is a pretty bad recipe because an overpowered zombie spawned right next to me and got me down to two hearts. And so I quickly rushed my way back home, trying to go to sleep, but I got Bruh. this message. And I kid you not, I was super confused on why I was getting this message in the first place since I couldn't find any monsters nearby. But that's when I realized that there was a monster right Try in front of my eyes. <laughs> And so without thinking too much, I attacked the firebender with my sword, but he struck back with fire. But I didn't let that stop me from coming back and delivering the final two hits. And once he died, he dropped two whole scrolls. That's like two whole abilities I can just master right there. And that's when I realized how I was going to become the master of firebending very easily. And so day six, I woke up with a mission of exterminating all firebenders, but I needed to prepare myself for battle first. So I unlocked two firebending abilities to create small fires and also the flaming whip of fire, which I can just shoot at enemies. By the way, the best part about firebending is how easy it is to get cooked food. I mean, just look at this. I also went on to unlock one of my favorite abilities called the air jump which is exactly what it sounds like and this was also the day i realized that i'm not actually the last airbender that's right because i found my long lost brother airbender buddy but for some reason this dude's face is just very annoying to look at like look at this man's face doesn't that face just like make you want and so i did exactly what any avatar would do in my position I killed him. But wait, wait, wait. Before you label me as the bad person, I did trick shot into death and it was pretty epic, okay? So so it was worth it. And everything happens for a reason because this man dropped me two airbending scrolls just like the firebender. And this is when my sanity as the avatar became corrupt. I started killing firebenders left and right, snatching the scrolls from their dead bodies. I even had to take down Uncle Fati because I couldn't leave any witnesses. But news was spreading across the entire village rapidly that I was on a rampage. And so I grew even more furious. And annihilating every single airbender and firebender in my sight. By nighttime, I had collected all of these scrolls and unlocked so many cool abilities like air blades, air bubbles, cloud burst, and so on. But the village that once used to be filled with happy people was now more quiet than ever. <laughs> Anyways, day 7 through 9 was all about me searching for some diamonds, so I mined for a very long time and fought tons of enemies on my journey, crossing lava and traveling hundreds of blocks. And just when I was about to give up, I saw it. And now, I pronounce you that mini god to diamond block. You may kiss the bride. But here's what I didn't see. This thing. You know what this thing is? Well, you probably do if you played modern Minecraft before. But if you don't know, this is actually a dungeon where a bunch of difficult mobs spawn that can kill you instantly. And not knowing this, I went inside to fight. And I fought for a very long time, farming my XP on them and getting stronger and stronger. And when I saw the chance, I even went inside to explore a bit, but I was getting bombarded with so many mobs. So I ran away and I eventually made it back to the village. But you know what? I couldn't help but feel disappointed in my performance on day 10. I felt like 
I needed to go back. I needed to prove myself to the world. So I fire jumped my way back to the dungeon and started fighting enemies left and right. This one creeper even tried to 360 trick shot me, but I told him I liked his cut. I then ended up making this little hole and farmed XP by blasting the hordes of angry mobs with my fireball attack. And this was also the perfect opportunity for me to try out this new flamethrower ability I just unlocked. And it was actually amazing. I can literally just melt my enemies in front of my eyes. But unfortunately, zombies were starting to sneak up behind me and I had to run away once again. On day 11, I upgraded my fireball attack to level 2, which gives me much bigger explosions. And to test it out, I exterminated all the firebenders nearby. But I wanted more scrolls, so I got on my ostrich horse thing and rode far, far away until I discovered another village. But it seemed like the Uncle Pajis in this village already knew who I was. And I'm pretty sure they were all scared of me because they were having a secret meeting about me. If you wanna go, then you go to hill and go down. Are you crazy? What the fuck, man? But I wanted to be the good guy for once, okay? I wanted to take care of the evil creatures lurking outside at nighttime for these villagers and so i did and when i was done i even found my first water bending scroll now me finding a water scroll happened to them was perfect time because on day 12 it was raining which is when water bending is the strongest and the best part is i also didn't need a water pouch to use my water bending abilities like you normally do so i was able to use my water bending skills very easily in fact i was actually killing so many mobs so fast that i was able to upgrade my water arc to level 2 the same day but by far the best water bending ability I unlocked so far was the water skate, which is so fun. Look at how fast I'm going. I was actually having so much fun just water skating that I decided to cross the Atlantic Ocean and look for buried shipwrecks along the way. But when I lost my grip and fell into the water, I realized that I can actually breathe underwater forever because I'm a waterbender. I didn't even think about that. Once I finally got to land, the first thing I saw was the desert temple, which is actually very useful to me since it contained both sand bending scrolls and earth bending scrolls. And therefore, I was able to unlock some very epic powers like sand prison, sandstorm, and a bunch of earthbending abilities, which I will get to show later on in the video. Days 14 through 16, I just grinded the game to find diamonds again, and I also farmed a bunch of XP while upgrading my bending abilities. But now it was time for me to finally explore the nether. So I found a lava pool and I tried to do that trick that everyone does to make the portal easily, but I forgot how to, and I was too lazy to look it up. So I just got the blocks and made the portal myself. Boom. At first, the nether seemed pretty normal, you know? I was just getting some glowstone for the ether portal that I will make later on. But then I saw spiders that shoot dark webs at you and give you a wither type effect which i literally almost died to. but just when i thought i got away i encountered an orange salamander thing that puts you on fire even if you just hit it and these were only just two of the many cursed modded mobs that were added into the nether so it's only gonna get more and more crazy from here on but after a while of exploring i finally found the fortress and air jumped on top of it like a badass which didn't last for long because my game just crashed Bruh. oh sh wait wait what the that wasn't supposed to be in the recording after spending about an hour to fix the issue and doing some uh, other other things, I was back and fire jumping all around, killing blazes left and right and 316 the skeletons. Woo! <laughs> It also turns out that blazes drop firebending scrolls, which was very useful. But I gotta admit, these fire powers made me a little bit too conceited because I accidentally fire jumped right into a pool of lava. <gasps> oh, what the f No! No way! No way! No, 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 no! Bruh, 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 no! <gasps> What the fuck? It was a miracle I even survived, but I went back to fighting like an idiot. By the end of the day, I had gotten enough blaze rods and I also upgraded my fire jump and fireball attacks, which as you can see is now even more epic. Day 21, I was finally back home to the village and crafted some glowstone blocks to make the ether portal. Why was I making this portal? Literally no reason. It was in the mod pack. I was curious. So I went in there for the first time and it looked super cool. I mean, there was, there was a flying whale and a... Uh, blueberries? I mean, this is exactly what I imagine when I think of heaven. But after a few minutes, an invisible force pushed me down to reality. Thanks, God! It was day 23, and I was out on the fields practicing my bending, but all of a sudden, I heard a very strange noise. What is that? <gasps> what, what the fuck is that? So I snuck around the bushes to get a closer look, and I found the leader, who was commanding his minions to blow my head off within just seconds. I was being targeted with missiles, and the Fortnite kids were back, saying, I tried attacking a few of them, okay? I simply was not fast enough to both 
dodge the strikes and hit back. It's impossible. So I marked the location of my map and ran away in hopes of getting revenge in the nearby future. But once I got back to the village, I immediately started upgrading my earth and combustion bending skills. The combustion powers basically made me like that guy from... What's that guy's name? Wait, he looks like Drake with like eye on his forehead. Yeah, but this guy, his name is Boom Boom Sparky Man. And I could blow up whatever I look at. Of course, this ability right now is like very weak. Look at this explosion. It looks like a fart. But as I level up this power, the explosions will only get bigger and more destructive. Like this. And since I was running out of space to carry stuff, I also made a backpack. But just when things were seeming to go all right, the worst possible thing happened. The blood this legit made me sh my pants. I had never seen this many angry mobs at nighttime chase me to death. I was I was fire jumping and screaming for my life. In real life, I was literally screaming. <laughs> but I eventually ran right into a trap. No, no. Why am I stuck in this thing? Dude, what the crap? Please, please. It could have ended all right there. Just like one, one more hit, one more time. I would have been gone. I wouldn't even be making this video right now. Oh my God. End story. I survived and uh, that that's how, that's how I met your mother. My mother. Ah, the aftermath of the blood moon was pretty disastrous and so I had to spend the next few days just repairing all the damage. But in the process of getting resources to rebuild, I managed to craft myself an enchanting table and an anvil to set myself up for the future attacks. And then I went outside to get some more resources but I unintentionally, I walked right into the territory of the sun god. Remember that guy? He, he almost killed me? Well he was back and I could sense his rage except this time I was ready to get my revenge. And so I dashed into battle slaying his little Gungingingai minions before they could do the take the L on me. Now keep in mind my fire powers were useless at the time since it was raining so i had to wait for the weather to calm down and then strike but even after all that this man was built like a galab jamun and i simply bounced right off of it i had to calculate the perfect opportunity to perform a sneaky flank which didn't take long and i was finally able to beat him to death and become victorious with no sun god and no minions i was left with a bunch of hay bales to myself which is exactly what i need to tame a flying bison but just as i was feeling confident in myself for the first time in a while i right away encountered to the sun god brother sun god buddy the second but i simply just stomped on his head with my fire jump <laughs> and to my surprise he ended up dropping his golden mask which turns out to be completely undestructible <laughs> and i look so much more badass wearing this so i kept it as a sign of honor so i can flex my dominance on the whole world and with the additional hay bills i just collected it was time for me to finally get a flying vice which forced me to travel a thousand miles but here's where i put my big brain into practice and decided to put a key bind on my air jump ability and spam the heck out of it to basically fly forever Whee! do i think this is broken yes am i gonna abuse this of course but clearly the minecraft gods didn't like me for this because i got struck by lightning boom oh what the f you know how rare that is it's like literally less than one in 100,000 chance of me getting hit by a lightning strike and it happened to me but after a bit more walking i finally spotted him in the distance look at off the fear cutie look, look at the little boy you be don't make the same mistake i did falling for how cute and fluffy this thing is because it's not it's it's horrible and smelly and the most untamable piece of sh yo he's eating he's actually eating it wait oh, shut your bitches he's there oh, papa, no no it's flying away oh, papa, Oh, Papa G! This dude just ate all of my golden apples and my hay. Bruh, it just said psych. It literally just farted on me, bro. At this point, I was done playing around it. And I realized I needed to assert my dominance. So I waited a whole entire day for this thing to come to ground level. All the way up until nighttime. And that's when this dude finally came down to take a massive dump. And before he could even slip out a tiny little fart, I started locking him up. <laughs> <laughs> You're never leaving. Why are you bullying me? So after abandoning Apapadi in the middle of nowhere, I started to head back home actually. But just a couple of seconds later, I ended up discovering a castle-like structure that I've never seen before. And so of course, out of curiosity, I went inside for a closer look, you know. What if there's a princess inside that needs to be rescued and saved and I get a special reward at the end? But it turns out this wasn't any magical castle at all. This was actually another dungeon. But since I had gotten much stronger than before, I actually ended up spending three whole days in there. Mainly gathering a bunch of OP enchantment books which were definitely worth the risk. But because of this very stupid mod I had installed, the mobs in this dungeon start to get literal superpowers. Which meant I had to find find an escape right away. So I just started digging up at a random spot. I just went straight up and it ended up being exactly where I left Apapaji. But there was something wrong. Apapaji! Apapaji, why are you dying? Why is he, why is he just dying? Oh my God, the heck? What the heck? Why is he on fire now? And 
while I was busy fending off a zombie, he took his one last breath. For the next few days, I set my priorities straight, okay? It was time for me to finally fight the Ender Dragon. So I made the Eyes of Ender finally, and I found multiple villages where I used the innocent villagers to practice my bending and blackmailed the firebenders for scrolls. What you think, being the avatar is all nice guy stuff? I have a business to run, okay? I got avatar stuff to do. So traveling from village to village was the fastest way for me to become the strongest avatar. In fact, one of my trips, I also discovered this random evil Darth Vader thing, which I didn't want to mess with now because I had no idea what that mod was. But it was very creepy, and I will get back to it later on in the video to explore the between lands. Look at this dude. What, are you okay, man? Oh, what the fuck? And of course, since I wasn't only preparing to beat the Ender Dragon, but absolutely obliterate it, I need to get even more OP loot. Which led me to invade another dungeon from day 41 to 45. At the end, I had obtained so much OP loot. And from the extra resources I was able to gather, I made a secret bunker where I organized all my stuff. It was finally time for me to beat the Ender Dragon. And so day 51, I entered the stronghold and scavenged the area for the portal room. The mobs were seeming like 10 times more difficult and aggressive than normal, but I kept fighting back. And eventually I made my way into the library area where I found my first lightning scroll, but I had no idea what was waiting for me inside the next room. Bruh. This was absolutely terrifying. I mean, a literal knight was guarding the outside of the portal room. What was I supposed to do? I never seen this thing before in my life, but I needed to get inside the room. I needed to think fast. And so I watched his behavior very closely and I realized that he gets stuck every time he does an attack with his giant axe, which is the perfect moment for me to air dash behind him and strike his butt cheeks. After just a few minutes, I was able to deliver the final blow. Yeah. And upon his death, he left behind the axe of a thousand medals, which is like, look at this. Even though this was all completely exhilarating and epic stuff, I, I might have ended up not having enough ender eyes. Bruh. But that wasn't really an issue because I quickly just raided another dungeon and farmed some ender pearls. My plan was to get straight back to the stronghold after I was done with that, but I... I may have got distracted by two very random things. First, I finally learned about making a bison saddle to fully tame a bison, and it worked. Oh! Oh, oh my, god. my god! Wait, can I go faster? <laughs> <laughs> but then on our way back home, I somehow crashed this thing in here. Are you crying? And second thing, I may have figured out that I can put multiple abilities on one single keybind. That means I can air jump and fire jump at the same time. Whoa! Oh, or use every single elemental shield with just one click. <laughs> now I'm ready for the Ender Dragon fight. And so I jumped straight into the end portal and got to breaking the end crystals right away. But it turns out my bending is completely useless against this thing. So I had to go old school and use the bow. But as soon as I landed on the ground, I saw something called the Ender Creeper running right towards me. Oh, get the f*** away from me. Get the f*** away from me. What is that? I managed to get away from it, but I almost died to another. Oh, what the heck was that? No, 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 no. Eat, eat, eat. After breaking all the end crystals, I thought it would be a good idea to fly around the ender dragon and attack her mid-air, which I regret it instantly. Oh, I'm actually dying. I'm actually dying. So in order to not die, I hid inside of an ice ball and waited for her to perch again. What is that? Why is this in the end? But on the other hand, I finally figured out that my wind bubble was the only effective attack against the ender dragon. So I began bombarding her with it. And die. Come on, come on, come on. End it with the cloud burst. Yes. Yes! That was actually kind of fun. And what better way to celebrate this victory than to try something I've been wanting to do for a while now. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! No! Watch your jet, bro! Watch your jet! Combining the elytra with my airbending literally made me Superman. And so I immediately used my new superpowers to find a swamp and take on my next big quest to invade the spirit world, which in this case is actually a modern dimension called the Between Lands. My first step was to make the portal, which required me to kill all these Grim Reaper mobs until I got four special stones from them. And once I got those stones, I took that and fed that into this fountain thing and I got a special key, which is the last thing I need to spawn the magical tree house. Yo, this looks sick. What the heck? Apapadi! What are you doing? Apapadi, no! He's dying! He's dying inside the thing! Apapadi! Apapadi! He's dead! Oh my- The only right thing left to do was give him a proper burial and say my goodbyes. Apapadi! 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 Why are you crying? 
The plan to invade the Fire Nation was only a couple days away and I still needed to get much stronger. So without thinking too much, I jumped right into the Betweenlands portal for the first time ever in my life. And I immediately felt a sense of terror surround me. There were sharks mixed with alligators called lurkers. And then old swampy hags that looked like zombies. What is that? And even leeches. The heck is this? What the heck is this? What is this? Yo! No, why is it sucking on me? Why is this sucking on me? Stop sucking me off! Oh yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, actual ghost. Is this so sin? What the f- On top of that, all my food was now rotten for some reason. So I had to adapt to my new environment and eat stuff like these blue mushrooms or crab claws. I even had to keep a lookout on this new bar, which if it reaches zero, I will start decaying. But then I encountered the white fortress, a castle filled with ghost and a bunch of loot. Oh. What is that? What is that? What is that? He just said die. He's drowning me. It's a ghost. It's a ghost. What is this? What is that? You're gonna die, bro. No, 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 no. I cannot die. I cannot die. I cannot die. Oh! Ah! Get away from me. Why is there a giant fart cloud coming towards me? There's no one here. There's no one here. Okay, everything's fine. What the? F it's following me. The ghost is following me. I need some food. I need some food. I need some food. Please give me some food. Glob Jumpins! Yes! Fight! More! Oh! That was a that was a prank! Just get me out. Just get me out. Just get me out. Please. Please. No way. Yeah, so I'm never going back there ever again. Anyways, it was now day 65, and since we were coming close to day 69, I thought it would be cool to celebrate by making a blueberry farm. What do blueberries have to do with 69? I I don't know. I I like blueberries and I like 69. <laughs> Okay, so back to what I was saying. I was collecting some blueberries in the ether when I ended up spotting a hey, floating coliseum. What is this thing? Why is this there? I mean, surely there has to be something special inside, right? So I went to go take a look and I found woman. Oh! Oh! But then I found out if I eliminated 10 of these Valkyrie princesses, I can get 10 medals. And then use those medals to summon a 1v1 against their Valkyrie queen. Come on, bring it on! Oh, lady! Oh, she's pissed. Boom! Bam! Oh! And when she died, she dropped the key to a chest that contained full Valkyrie gear and boxing gloves. After that battle, I was feeling pretty good about myself. And on top of that, it was finally day 69! And to celebrate day 69, I found a village and practiced my powers on innocent villagers for fun. But then I realized I could be hurting so many other mobs if I just went to the dungeon once again. So that's what I did from day 69 to 72. Listen, it's, it's not just for fun, okay? I, I also need to get stronger. I don't have a problem. Oh, and of course, I enchanted everything. And then on day 73, I decided for some reason that now would be a good time to focus on building a house. I know it's the most random thing to do at this point but i just wanted to make the village look a little bit pretty okay because this looks like a crap and i also use this time to construct the portal to the next modded dimension the erebus a world full of giant squirmy bugs and their master the antilion overlord <laughs> why did i just put an elephant sound there that's that's not the sound it actually makes <laughs> And so I entered the strange dimension to only spawn buried underground. Why? Why is that a thing? I mean, that has to be a bad omen. So I started digging and once I finally found some light, I also discovered darkness. Oh my god. What the heck? What is this? Why are there so many bees? I was very fortunate to be able to just fly around and explore things more freely because of my elytra and my jumping air jump powers, you know? But to cut to the chase, it was on day 80 that I finally discovered the pyramid where the overlord lives. And this is where it gets very complicated for no reason. In order for me to actually get inside this thing, I need to collect four different keys from four different robots in four different corners of this giant maze. Why is it so much work? And trust me, going inside this maze was a terrible idea because it's very easy to get lost and it also has traps so of course just like school i found a way to finesse the system okay all i needed to do was estimate where one corner of this maze would be from above and then dig around that spot until i found the outside of the maze's corner now all i had to do is break into that corner and kill the robot you see work smart not hard kids learn from me <laughs> and by traveling the square path i was able to hit all four corners as well and get all four keys but if you thought that was it to unlock this pyramid no 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 that was only the first step because there was like two more levels which require me to collect items like magma cream and stuff to open this last level it's it's a lot of explaining so long story short i got it done and it was finally time for me to crush this cockroach thing <gasps> this was a very tricky fight i mean i couldn't get too close to this thing because he would start stomping the ground to fire powerful shockwaves and my bending turned out to be
be useless because he's immune to it. My best plan was to just keep jumping around as he attacks it. And once he ran out of his stamina, I scooped in and smacked him with my sword. And in order to protect myself, I had to use my ice shield to absorb all his damage. But that didn't stop me from coming close to death. Back off. Back off. Back off. I am the Avatar! Booga Booga! Is he dead? He's dead! Yes! And once he died, he dropped something called the Quake Hammer, which was actually pretty cool, but I didn't really need it. The real award was to finally be able to leave this place once and for all. There were only 10 days left until my plan to invade the Fire Nation, and I still had quite a bit left to do. First, at this point, I still had to master Earth, Water, and Combustion powers all the way. And even though I had a whole collection of scrolls at my disposal already, it still took me until day 96 to completely master all 8 elements. And second, I had to go to the Nether and get magma blocks in order to actually build the portal to go to the Fire Nation. But you might be asking, what else did I do in those 10 days? Well, I went on one last adventure. The objective was to find myself a flying lemur, which is super rare to get and they only spawn in the jungle biome. But after days of flying around, I finally spotted one. <laughs> it's Momo! Momo buddy! To tame him, I use an apple and a golden apple. Yes! Look at him, he's just sitting right there! Look at it! Oh my god, look at it! Oh! He's on my shoulder! Mama Pati! Mama Pati! To celebrate having Mama Pati by my side, I went on a little trip to the skies and we flew around for fun. But all that joy didn't last for long. Mama Pati! Mama Pati's gone! Mama Pati! At this point, I was freaking out. I thought my game just glitched, so I went down to the surface and searched the jungle again. But I never found Mama Pati. He was gone! He was gone forever! <laughs> I didn't even have the strength to say my final goodbyes. But then I turned around and saw that portal. It was time. It was finally time. Goodbye, cruel world. I was finally here, but I had one last thing to do. Today your ass is gonna die, bitch. Say goodnight, motherfucker. And so I flew straight into the battle and started attacking all the firebenders around me, smacking them with my sword. And when I got to the middle, I even found innocent Uncle Bajis being burnt alive. And I couldn't save them, but they left behind this chest that contained a fiery sword, which was exactly what I needed to finish the job. Without thinking too much, I dashed into the next room and started building a wall behind me. But I didn't realize that the Fire Lord was patiently just waiting for me. I'm here to firebend your balls, bitch. I immediately jumped forward and smacked him on the head, which made him very angry because he whipped out fireballs and started blasting them my way. My only option was to hide behind these giant pillars or use my ice shield when I got too close, but that didn't work out too well because he just spawned firebenders who broke the shield instantly. But after attacking him for a while, he somehow ended up in this corner where I spammed my wind shurikens right at his face, which only made him even more furious. <laughs> The only way to cool him down was to now use water, but that only worked out for a little bit until he got to a low enough level and made an invisible shield around him. I just had to keep on attacking until the shield was finally destroyed, and then once I got the right wind of opportunity, I equipped ice cold water, slid behind him, and blasted a beam right through his heart. Oh! And that was it. I actually made it to day 100 as the avatar and took down the fire lord. If you watched up to this point and genuinely enjoyed what you saw, then all I ask from you is to simply like the video and subscribe. And if you want to see another video from me, here's another video on the screen. Just click it and I'll be there, okay? I'll see you there. Bye. Nick Mana.